combining energy conservation and momentum conservation. So we have three goals in this session. We're going to review how we classify collisions. We'll consider situations in which we can apply both energy conservation and momentum conservation. And then we'll analyze a particular situation when we do this. So first we'll talk about elasticity. This is the ratio of the relative velocities of the two objects after the collision to the relative velocities that they have before the collision. So our elasticity parameter is k, it's uh, dimensionless, and it, note that it's v2f minus v1f, those are the final velocities of objects 2 and 1, and then in the denominator we reverse them so it's v1i, the initial velocity of object 1, minus the initial velocity of object 2. And we reverse the order of objects 2 and 1 versus 1 and 2 uh, to keep k positive. Okay, so what can we do with this? So one thing we can do with it is we can classify collisions based on either what happens with the kinetic energy or equivalently what happens with this elasticity parameter. So we have four types of collisions. In the superelastic case, we end up with more kinetic energy afterwards. So this is some kind of explosion, uh, maybe with a spring-loaded piston or uh, a real explosion. Or equivalent, we, equivalently, we can say the elasticity is greater than 1. A very special case is the elastic collision, where kinetic energy is conserved. K equals 1. Again, that's quite unusual. Uh, most collisions really are inelastic, where there's less kinetic energy afterwards, where the k parameter is larger than zero but less than one. And occasionally, you get the objects sticking together afterwards, and that's what we call completely inelastic. Again, there's less kinetic energy. k equals zero, because the relative velocity between them is zero afterwards. Okay, so things to keep in mind when you're thinking about collisions we apply momentum conservation, and so what we assume is that the collision happens in a small time interval, so that means the momentum in the system just before the collision is, in general, equal to the momentum in the system just after the collision. On the other hand, kinetic energy is generally not conserved. There's lots of other places that the energy can be transformed into. It can do work, it can go off its sound, things like that. So it's only conserved in the special case of an elastic collision. But in general, momentum is conserved in all collisions. Now, in some cases, we can apply an energy analysis not to the collision itself, to connect before the collision to after the collision. That's what we use momentum for. But we can say maybe, for instance, after the collision, the car is sliding across the road and then comes to a stop after sliding for you know 20 meters. And you can actually apply energy conservation to analyze that. Okay, so let's apply this to a particular situation. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a baseball on top of a basketball and drop it so that they hit the ground. And if you do this right, so the baseball stays right above the basketball, then the baseball can end up being launched quite high up in the air, much higher than the height the balls were dropped from. Okay, so one nice thing about this is the basketball is three times the mass of the baseball. That's something of a special case, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So, how do we explain what we see? And we're going to analyze this as an elastic collision. So we will take you through kind of the sequence of events here. So here's a picture showing kind of initially what's going on. The baseball is above the basketball. Now usually when you actually drop it, you sit the baseball on top of the basketball and you let them go from rest. Here we've separated them just to kind of uh, see what's going on and break it, break the system down a little bit. A lot of the things actually happen simultaneously, but we're going to assume that they happen in sequence. Okay, so they fall down to the ground, and they pick up speed, and then the basketball hits the ground, and then there's a collision. Now we're going to assume it's an elastic collision. What that does is just reverses the velocity of the basketball and now sends it up toward the baseball which is still coming down. So now there's a baseball-basketball collision and from that collision the baseball acquires quite a large velocity and it shoots high up in the air. Okay, so let's analyze that. 
So we're going to drop the ball so they tr uh, drop through the same height h and they acquire speed v when the basketball hits the ground and this is just energy conservation here. Note that we're on the, this is before the collision happens so we can use energy conservation. Okay, so, and notice the m's cancel out so it, it, uh, it's the same v for both balls. Okay, then the collision with the floor turns the basketball's velocity around so now we have a basketball going up with V and a baseball coming down with the same speed V. Okay, and again we've treated the basketball floor collision as taking place before the basketball baseball collision. It simplifies our analysis a bit, but it doesn't change the outcome. Okay, so now we have this collision. The basketball of mass 3m velocity V up colliding with a baseball of mass m and velocity V down. And if you look at this collision when you do this for yourself, you'll see the basketball actually stop dead afterwards, so that means the baseball acquires all the velocity. And if we apply momentum conservation, you can show that the baseball's velocity is 2v, twice as much as it had before the collision. And that also happens to conserve kinetic energy. Now we can do this a little more carefully. So we'll start with our momentum conservation. And up is positive, so we've got 3mv for the uh, basketball beforehand minus mv for the baseball and afterwards we'll say okay we've got some unknown velocity of the basketball big vf and then little vf for the baseball and so that simplifies to that we'll call that equation one now we can do an elastic collision we could apply energy conservation equations but energy is a little bit hard to work with because the v squareds so we use elasticity instead it's an elastic collision so k is one and we end up with 1 equals Vf minus big Vf over 2V, which we can rearrange to plus 2V minus, equals minus Vf plus Vf. Okay, so now we'll call that equation 2. We put these two equations together and solve. You find, again, the baseball has a velocity of plus 2V and the basketball is at rest. So then you say, well, how high does the baseball go? So if you drop it from height h, it requires a speed v, that's mj just half mv squared, this is just the other way around. Now we're at the floor with the baseball with a velocity of 2v, and so because the 2v ends up being squared, the height is four times what it started out as. So the baseball goes four times as high. And if you do it with like a basketball and a ping pong ball, you can go even higher, it can go up to like 9h. Okay, so that's a nice introduction to situations where we can do energy and momentum in the same situation.